Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St Mary's this morning for our Eucharist. Um, just to let you know that for after the service, please stay for refreshments, which are going to be in our new hall. Okay. <laughs> Um, the second hymn you will have on your sheet, you've got a spare, an extra sheet with your order of services and that will be the second hymn. Could we please just have a few moments of silence in preparation for our worship. Our first hymn is number 392, O Thou Who Camest From Above. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we celebrate today the feast of the baptism of Christ, let us hear words from baptism by Malcolm Geit. Love's hidden thread has drawn us to the font a wide womb floating on the breath of God. Feathered with seraph wings, lit with the swift lightning of praise, with thunder overspread, and undergirded with an unheard song, calling through water, fire, darkness, pain, calling us to the life for which we long yearning to bring us to our birth again. Again, the breath of God is on the waters in whose reflecting face our candles shine. Again, he draws from death the sons and daughters for whom he bid the elements combine. As living stones around a font today, 
Rejoice with those who roll the stone away. Sisters and brothers, we are living stones gathered around this font, gathered around the beginnings of our faith at the start of a new year of faith. We know that God is merciful and filled with love. And so because God was merciful, he saved us through the waters of baptism. And he has given us the renewing powers of the Holy Spirit, bringing us to new birth. Through sin, we have fallen away from our baptism. Therefore, let us now return to the Lord and renew our faith in his promises by confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Sisters and brothers, we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated as we hear readings from the Scriptures?
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison who's, who's, sorry, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee and after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people 
and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. You can find our next hymn on the sheets you were given as you came into church. It's When Jesus Came to Jordan. And if you were here early, you'll have heard Alan playing the tune, but he's going to play a long introduction just to remind us of it now. Alleluia, alleluia. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts 
be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Would you please be seated? Christenings are often thought of, are often imagined as very decorous and well-mannered affairs, where passively cooperative babies are sprinkled with a few drops of lukewarm water. And the minister conducting the ceremony is extremely careful not to dampen the baby's pristine white lace gown. This might be a slightly unrealistic caricature of the reality of baptismal services, especially here at St. Mary's, where they tend fortunately to be noisy, engaging, and chaotic. Where they occasionally involve great overflowing floods of water and christening gowns no longer pristine. Well, you know what babies are like. Something of the orderly and the very well-mannered idea of a baptism can be seen in one of the most famous images of Christ's baptism in Christian art. This is the baptism of Christ by the workshop of Leonardo da Vinci. In this beautiful image from the 15th century, John the Baptist wears a blue and pink silk robe over what appears to be an extremely neatly tail tailored camel hair cardigan. Jesus and John are both standing ankle deep in a pristine, crystal clear puddle of water. John uses a small silver plate to sprinkle a few drops of water upon Jesus' head. And then above them, in the clear and open sky, a pair of disembodied hands from heaven release gently a blindingly white dove that floats above the scene. Just up the road from where this image is now displayed in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, there's another very different icon of baptism, though. This is the grand separate baptistry building outside Florence's cathedral, the Duomo. This is an equally well-ordered idea of baptism's significance in the active life of the church, but it draws rather a contrast to Leonardo's image. Inside the baptistry outside Florence's cathedral is a very small font, not much bigger than ours here at St. Mary's. But in the enormous building that surrounds it, 14th century mosaics fill the space with the reflection of shimmering gold. And in arcades around the archwork, there are prophets and patriarchs above whom stories of the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament are shone out in careful color work, interrupting the flow of the gold of the mosaics. One of these stories is the baptism of Christ. It's quite small within that great artistic narrative. Delightfully, if you look at it closely, you can just about see a fish popping its head out of the shimmering Jordan River, in which, for reasons of modesty, Jesus is immersed right up to his neck. But it's a very small image. And the dominant impression of the baptistry is of stories coming together over and over again to tell together the story of God's glory. And in fact, the most resonant of all the images in the baptistry is not that of baptism. It is the largest image there. It is Christ seated in majesty, seated above the kingdoms of the world and above creation on a throne made of the heaven's arch of the waters. The Duomo's baptistry is trying to show that all the orders of creation are reconciled in the rule of him who has been glorified on earth as in heaven by holy splendor. It's a proclamation of orderliness, a little like that of Leonardo da Vinci, but orderliness in triumph, where everything is fixed and established by a kindly, kingly Messiah. 
The final image of baptism from Christian art that I'd like to share with you this morning is a further contrast, a contrast with both these images, with both their well-mannered and their grand Renaissance tone. In the 11th century, in a little town in northern Germany, the Abbess Hilter, Abbess of the nunnery of Meshid, commissioned some illustrations for a selection of gospel readings to be read by her nuns. In the painting, it's only about so high, accompanying the lectionary reading that we've just heard today is an image of the baptism of Christ. In this image, John, wearing a shaggy, ragged old camel hair coat, stands above Jesus, who is held within flooding, rushing waters that swirl around him, within which part of this motion are all kinds of bizarre-looking fish. They all seem to have exceptionally long noses for some reason. It's quite a comedic image. But the reason why this image is particularly important and interesting is that plummeting down upon Christ is not a softly swooping dove. Here, the Holy Spirit, as if a dove, is more like a peregrine falcon, shooting down upon him, its wings shot back with the power of its speed. There is urgency. There is passion and power in its descent. And above that image of the Holy Spirit, descending on Jesus at his baptism, the heavens explode in a symphony of star-like fireworks. Now, our ideas of baptism can run all the way from the decorous to the cosmic and the chaotic, and they probably should do so, because there is space within the story of Christ's baptism and within our modern liturgies of baptism to contain layer upon layer upon layer of symbolism and association. But I feel that this final image, the one I've attempted to describe where the Holy Spirit swoops like a falcon, brings something important into our understanding of the gospel and of our imagining of that moment when, behold, as he came up from the waters, the heavens were ripped apart, torn open with the strong parental love of the Father for the Son. And behold, the Spirit of God fell upon him as being like a dove. And a voice boomed from heaven. This is my beloved Son, the one in whom I delight. With the same suddenness of divine encounter and the same significance of the passion of divine love, we're later called beloved children of God through this same kind of baptism imitated within the church. The first letter of St. John instructing all Christians to see what love the Father is giving to us, that we should be named now as children of God when in word and in action we live in love and in righteousness. On this Christmas feast, this epiphany feast, when we realize what Christ's birth means, and when we hear of his baptism, when we recall or look forward to our baptism and their importance, we're not imposing order or conformity. Instead, we are remembering what it means to fulfill all righteousness through the sudden power of the Holy Spirit in our personal and our public and our communal actions and lives. We're remembering what it means to discover suddenly and all too completely that our lives are being lived within the passionate embrace of the familial life of the Trinity in relation to the glorious and loving Father by the shocking power of the Holy Spirit. 
as together sons and daughters of God, all sharing in Christ's beloved sonship. Amen. If you wish to, would you please stand? As we recall or look forward to our own baptisms, let us share in saying these words of faith, the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, in the power of God's descending Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for all that is good. We pray for our planet. Heavenly Father, you have taught us through your servant St Francis that all creation is your handiwork. We confess that we have put your creation in peril through our greed and unwillingness to live more simply that others may simply live. Grant us your grace that we may exercise wise stewardship of this earth, tread lightly upon it and cherish its resources, that our children may enjoy its riches throughout all generations and your name be glorified through all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, the community of the forgiven. We pray for our own church and for other churches near us, for Catholic and Orthodox churches, for Barnet Brookside Methodist Church as they renew their covenant with you, for East Barnet Baptist Church, St John's United Reformed Church, the Salvation Army, and the Salt Society of Friends. Bless their work of liberation, healing, and reconciliation, and give us greater unity with them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our godchildren, godparents, and the godparents of those we love. And we give thanks for our own baptism as your beloved children with a message the world must hear. We pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation for themselves or their children. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our patron, King Charles, and for all the royal family, that they may reconcile with each other and find healing for the hurts of the past. We pray for all in authority over us and those who seek to influence how we think, speak, and act. We pray particularly at this time for a just and fair settlement of industrial disputes 
and that those who provide an essential service to our communities may be rewarded for all they do. And we pray for all affected by industrial action. Help us to honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those your Son came to release and heal, for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, for those whose homes are places of isolation, deprivation and abuse, and those who have no home, for those whose work exploits and endangers them, and those who have no work. We pray particularly for health service workers as they seek to help as many as possible against overwhelming odds. We pray for all asylum seekers and refugees, for the victims of violence and aggression, especially in warfare, for Afghanistan, Ukraine, Tigray, Yemen and Myanmar. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, Alison, Jilly, Don and Leo, Ethan, Sarah, James and William, Trevor and Luke, Jim, Barbara, Val, Mike, Roger B, Emma, Peter, Mark, Danny, Richard and Sarah, Ian, Debbie, Martin, Georgina, any others known to us, and those whose needs are known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and for comfort for all who mourn them. We pray for Nick Knudsen, Pope Benedict, those who are dear to us on earth, and those who died suddenly, violently, in fear or alone. From the darkness of the shadow of death, release them into your everlasting light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Mary the Virgin, St. John the Baptist, St. Alban and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole beautiful and fragile creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. If you wish to, would you please stand? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a word and a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Our next hymn is number four hundred and fifty four.
Gracious God, accept our gifts and with them our lives for your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You celebrated your new gift of baptism in signs and wonders at the Jordan. Your voice was heard from heaven to awaken faith in the presence among us of your word made flesh. Your spirit was seen as if a dove, revealing Jesus as your servant and anointing him with the oil of gladness to preach good news to the poor. Therefore, as we celebrate the union of earth and heaven, we rejoice to echo the song of the angels in heaven, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. All are welcome at this feast of Christ's holy table. And so if you've been baptised and prepared to receive communion in this or any other Christian church, I hope that you will receive in bread and wine signs of God's love for you here at St Mary's today. If you'd like to be baptised, then there's no better day on which to ask me about baptism after our service. And if you would prefer to simply receive a blessing, then please let me know that that's what you're seeking as you come before the table to the place where I will be sharing the bread. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you.
Lord of all time and of eternity. You opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me remind you of how Chris opened our service today. After our blessing and our final hymn, please don't leave the church to go in love and peace to serve the Lord, or at least not immediately, but come into our new community halls where refreshments will be served today. You can get into the new community halls either by going down the vestry corridor and through the door there, or by leaving church through the blue doors and then we'll have probably the fire exit door nearest to those open as well. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to start using that new community space for which we'll be giving thanks in a special service on the 19th of February with many special guests and also a party. Over the next few weeks, there'll be some clergy visiting us and I do hope that you'll not only come along to the services, not only invite your friends and your neighbours, but also give them a very warm welcome. I may be here, or I may be not. It all depends at what point my wife goes into labour. But next week, on the 15th, Bishop Stephen Venner will be taking our service. On the 22nd, we welcome back Sam Corn, former curate at this church, to take the service. And then on the 29th, we welcome back Brian Backstone, who's often with us in the summer, to take our service. Hopefully, I will be back with you, at least, by the 5th of February, where we have our all-age Messy Eucharist for Chris Dingle. And talking of Chris Dingle, there are little boxes available at the back of church or by just, uh, just by the south doors, which you can put together, if you can work out how, to collect spare change for the Children's Society. Our collection at the Chris Dingle service will be in aid of the Children's Society and the important work they do. And if you want to bring along a little box stuffed with spare change, then, or at any other point, we'll be happy to pass that donation on to the Children's Society also. And they even stand upright on their own. Now, would you please, if you wish to, stand so that we can share in God's blessing together before we sing our final hymn, which is number 277, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ Shine in your hearts and fill your lives with joy, peace, and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.